Hiya, girls. We are Barney and Lukey, and we are the hot young visionaries behind Truffle Pig Wigs. And this is Cliffhangers, the unofficial, unrequested, and unhinged RuPaul's Drag Race recap show. The views and opinions expressed on Cliffhangers are from a couple of women who just love drag and have zero real business judging it. If you are not a fan of red hot acidic critique, turn back now. It is hardcore proof that two wrongs do not make a right. Ladies and theys, it is Barney. And it is London's original tacky doll. (gasps) It is Miss Lucky Luck. Hot Cheetos and Tackies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bob Tacky. Oh, I get it. I get it. I get it. it. Hello, little gay people. Hello. Sorry we're a day late, but... We've got shit to do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> truly, truly. But uh, what have we been up to this week? What? Well. Tell them, Luke. We've moved studios from a basement dungeon to a lovely light filled room with a glass ceiling and honeys. We are crashing straight through it. You try and stop <laughs> us. <laughs> uh, UK versus the world has started on the Beeb. Uh, we'll do a little rundown on that at Will the we? end. Uh, Maggie's asked for it. Okay. The fans have asked. The um, fans have I gave myself a lovely foot spa pedicure moment on sunday and that is it <laughs> <laughs> what a shit life <laughs> what a sad little life um i don't know what i've been up to nothing interesting just eating eating oranges eating I guess. um let's talk some drugs okey dokey previously on rupaul's drag race Les Hot Hot Honeys produced tension-grabbing super teasers in two groups. Andrea Paris Van Michaels was the winner for the second time, making her the front runner. Whilst unfortunately, Kerry the Heartbreaker Colby and Alyssa Hunter were the bottom two and had to lip sync to play by J Lo. Banger. Luckily for all the little forest animals, the hunt was called off and Alyssa had to hot step it. <laughs> you and you are a, you're a writer you're an She's artist a you're a creator thank you absolutely gorgeous did you see Alyssa's chin foundation mark on the mirror underneath her lips no <laughs> <laughs> there was a little beige um oval Lovely. under the lip mark a little bit of stubble in it too perhaps I imagine didn't you notice or feel like the fun and games are really fading away now and it seems like suddenly people have realized we're in a competition shit's getting real i need to not go i need to i feel like it feels like that very quickly always on america because that the tensione is so high as opposed to england where they're just that i've only i've only gigged once before but particularly lovely to be on tv this episode i think it showed like four confessionals being like oh my god like this is it now i haven't won yet this is my time to shine yeah yeah no no i definitely feel it um and then should we head into the next day it's a new day to work oh (laughs) rupert the bear coming in if there is one more motherfucking unceremonious booting of a beloved queen, I'm going to scream. I'm going to weep. I can't believe. Where are the medics? Oh, Jesus. Gross. Where is the holistic help? We, like, seriously, what are we going to do about these girlies' ankles? Like, it can't just be a thing that happens now. And the worst thing of it all is I know that if I got into drag race, <laughs> my paper thin ankles would snap in oh, a second oh cruciate ligaments will be gone i'm actually i'm touching my forehead now i'm due a sprain i yeah. sprain my ankle very regularly same it used to be a real real problem for me um did you think that message to the girls was so emotional it was like almost like from beyond the grave yeah yeah yeah. like giving Definitely like a posthumous um feel to it yeah i felt like it was like the we- reading of the will i Let's just talk. We've had Eureka. We've had Vicky Scone. We've had Cornbread. And of course, the OG patron saint of busted hips is Madame Lequeer with my uncle go click. Don't you forget about Veronica Green and her coves. Oh, not, yeah. Not yeah. necessarily an injury, but... No, no, no. A mental injury. Sure. Um, we've had... To, and also, Corny B and Lemon losing them in the same week. Mm. So difficult. So difficult. So horrible, isn't it? Um, I'm going to need season 15 onwards. I'm going to need medics on the honeys at all times. Or just like Diamante ankle support, yeah, 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 yeah. something. There needs to be something in place. When Willow broke down, I was fighting for my life. I, baby, don't cry. Don't cry. No one went to hug them. Come on. It's because we're trying to, she's, 
she needs to be strong on her own, yeah. especially now she's like true. sans cornbread. True, true, true. Um, well, cornbread's the winner of season 14 anyway, so it doesn't really matter. I mean, I just, that whole moment, the video and everything of them talking to the girls, it was like, sorry, whose drag race is this? It felt like <laughs> Victoria's gone, booted out without a fucking whisper. It was just like, oh, Victoria's gone, move on. Mm. And then they give cornbread like a video to like sit there and like, just giving individual messages to all the girls. In Untucked, Loved she has it. a whole backstage moment as well. Really? Yeah. Absolutely fantastic. But in with, better uh, news, yeah. Bryce and Bruno are back. You aren't they? Uh, to pop there wasn't balloons. enough straight energy in the in the room. Who would you want to pop your balloon against? Um Bruno. Yeah. Bruno's the highest. What do they say? What do they say in uh, Luca? Something Bruno. Silencio Bruno. Silencio Bruno. Um, I was really willing one of them hoes to be like, I'm glad Cornbread's gone because now it's like, so you can see who the weak bitch is. Mm. It's like no one celebrates one of the good girls. And who home. was it? Lady C. Lady C. Weak by name. Was na- it? Weak by name, weak by nature. I don't think it was. Maybe Orion. One of the pale girls. No, no, it was Diabetti. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow, wouldn't expect that from her. Look at me being like, I have <laughs> any chance to tear down Lady C. Uh, but then we head into the mini challenge, which is, it's, it's a dirty dancing. Uh, it's it, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, which I thought Ooh, would be real probably tickle your fantasies. Because you love a bit of dirty dancing, don't you? I do. I reckon I would pop that balloon in one go as well. Do you think These so? Ho- this horse riding pelvis. Yeah. There's a lot of heat in them there, heels. There is. Um, those girls... Oh, and it, I would have gone for Bruno 100% Yeah, as well. of course. Um, they were like rabid hyenas and it's week four. Like, oh, when they're like brought out and then they're like, you get to touch them. It was like, you, girls, you need to start hotel rutting. I feel I like this feel might be... feel that potent sexual heat coming through <laughs> the screen. I feel like it's got to be something in their contract to always go mad when the pit crew come in. Because literally it's like day one and they're just like rubbing yeah. their thighs. like Maybe they're on stars. like a no wank ban as well. Maybe they like, as soon as they get into the hotel oh, room, they put on like, yeah, they put on <laughs> kitchen gloves. Mm. They're like, you can't. So they just got to sort of rub themselves up against the walls. You know, some people, I don't know if this is just in films and cartoons I've seen, but some people can bring themselves to orgasm just without touching, just thinking about it. Yeah, no, that's definitely true. Also, a lot of girls, shout out Lottie Vallis, um, they would ride the end of their beds when they were younger. You Literally, know? that's all that they do in Big Mouth. And I, that's yeah. never been a thing for me. I d- Clearly didn't have the right bedstead. Maybe not. Clearly growing up in... A in, futon. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, and that's that's a real thing, isn't it? Sort of just like anonymously and rubbing yourself up against miscellaneous cuddly toys. Well, I didn't walls, know until Big Mouth. No. The arms of chairs. Apparently so. I don't know, maybe you should get into it in the studio. I don't mind, I'll turn a blind eye. Um, just do it on everyone's wigs. You get a little little bit of Lukey in every wig. <laughs> oh, moving forward. We're not going to spray perfume on them anymore. Um, the OMG cut. To Maddie, it's going to get very old, mm. very quickly. Are we really hyping up the idea that a straight man can't pop a balloon on another man? You're boring. Also, Maddie's fucked men, so what's yeah, what you're saying? Also, yeah, I was literally just about to say, like, <laughs> weren't you? Didn't you think you were trans, and also you were a sex worker? Yeah, like. But also, like, the fact that, like, Maddie is playing into it as well. Like, wouldn't it be so much more interesting and, like, better in a queer safe space to be like, bring it on. Do you know what I mean? Slap his ass. Like, well, no, because RuPaul's obviously sniff. gone backstage, grabbed him by the scruff of the neck. And be like, you are scared of men. Yes. All of these sissies turn you. You play your, your role and boil. Get out of my pub. Uh, it's just so fucking boring. It's so lame. And it's so, it's moments like that that you're like, oh, this is really for I us. I really hate it. It's for a straight audience. Do you know what I mean? It's for like the husbands that watch Lord being like, oh my God, imagine if I had to touch another man. It's like, well. We get enough from you- the like awkward homophobic like military makeovers. We don't need I know. you to then I know. be in it as well. When, what was the one, the makeover when one of them was like, just like it straight was up homophobic? Womp, womp, that one, the army guy and she painted him silver and he went and threw up halfway through. Yeah. I mean, he looked like the female gremlin. The fox. No, that's the wedding one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, uh, that is the one. Yeah. Um, all those girls' faces behind him as he shuddered to be so close to a man as well. If you didn't catch that, when it, it did like a close up of Maddie, and then you could see like Angeria, you could see like three of the other girls, and they were all literally just like, they look like sort of like evil gremlins, like just like standing <laughs> behind him. And Maddie's just like little. I, I need an age check on Maddie because Maddie is either 57 or 16. Hang on. There's nothing in well, between. I can't my thingy so, 
such an unplaceable age. You vamp for a second. I'm going okay. to search. Guys, I'd like to talk to you about Squarespace. Who needs no, a, well, they're not paying first, us. No, that is true. They're not paying <laughs> us. But Squarespace, if you would like to. Um, 27. 27. Mm. Strange. Strange. Um, love the little... Uh, the the six foot the little top and six foot five bottom dynamic which was the best it's like a little Georgia's. guinea pig yeah a guinea pig trying to shoot his shot um and and Kerry was like like good yeah. lord she had never topped a thing in her life <laughs> um and also like seen as Bryce is straight like get it, that's that is, is Bryce al- straight isn't 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 one of them straight I don't know oh, the ginger I one gotta get back on yeah, the old I think Bryce is straight because people were losing their mind about Maddie it was like there are straight people there have been straight people in the workroom all along um and that's called Ali Ali ship presenting to the stage Miss Ali ship that's ally ship sissies get into it look he rocks up in his little speedo with his testes hanging out and he lets all of these disgusting horny gay men frot on him um, and I say disgusting gay men because obviously Kerry is not involved in that. Thank you. Um, but I just yeah. found out that Ginger Delight Pit crew member Bryce. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. Oh, I hate Reddit. <laughs> He's definitely straight. I've seen it on. Fine. I've seen it on uh, on uh, Twitter. Loads. No fact that a straight man do be called Bryce in the pit stop. <laughs> It was taking me the fuck out of how much Kerry was whooping and hollering at, at Georgia's. <laughs> like she literally, she looked like she was gonna like collapse. It was so good. But Georgia's, I just want to pick her up, hold her to thy chest, and just she is the cutest motherfucking little thing in the world. She'd but... be like a lovely statement necklace on someone if she yeah. just kind of like wrapped around your shoulder and neck. Or I mean, something. we'll get on to her. Her step into the world of drag later but i was literally like after that i was like completely melted to her i was like i love you so much mm. not that i didn't love her your before, little just... argentinian football player from 1995 <laughs> <laughs> um loved to see the pork chop legacy coming through <laughs> legacy remember my name first out what a fucking shout how would you deal with it if you were first out you'd have to just merch buy songs. into it yeah, yeah. Although I don't want to, I would hate to be like a slogan merch girl because it feels very despo. Wow. You hear that? All you season four queens going in. If you want my respect. No right, slogans. I'm going to read you a list and then I want you to tell me who you would bring back out of the first outs. We've got, but not limited to, Victoria Portrop Parker, Shangela, Venus D-Light, Alyssa Summers, Penetration, Kelly Mantle, Slash Magnolia Crawford, Tempest Du Jour, Dax slash Layla McQueen, James Mansfield, Vanji, Soju, Dahlia Sin, and Kimora. Who would you bring back? Three of them. That I can't bring the ones that they've brought back already. You can if you want. If they um, feel like they or Shangela. <laughs> yeah. Maybe Venus Delight. Venus Delight! See, I feel like she's had time to be doing some shit. She looks absolutely fucking mental. Let me tell you what time has done to her. Mania. Madness and mania. Well, she's following Madonna's footsteps, <laughs> yeah, isn't yeah. she? Literally, actually, she has kind of evolved and grown with Madonna. Mm. Actually, that feels quite a fair. Um, um, I'll give her Dahlia. Dahlia Sin. Yeah. So fair. Also, an OnlyFans girl. Always rock hard buttocks. Always popping up on my mm. Twitter. Congrats, honey. Um, I'd bring That back- was me specifically not choosing the gals that have been chosen now. Okay. Because I do love James. Oh, my God. Same. Um, I'd 100% bring back Layla McQueen, though. Oh, you love one Layla? Of the gra- well, just one of the greatest painters ever. But like- the painting don't get you far. It's like wow. it, biting your finger does. Though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tell him. Tell him how much you hate it. Oh, I just really hate it when she bites her finger. I've got a thing about people doing cutesy stuff with their mouth, I guess. Oral fixation. You know, like how on TikTok when everyone does that like tongue thing, like, oh, I'm so cute biting the tongue, like die. And I once made out <laughs> with someone who thought like was uh, putting his fingers in my mouth when we were kissing. It's like, you're not fingering my mouth, pussy. Like, <laughs> Just Mussy. kiss me, <laughs> kiss me, and use your hands elsewhere. Like I don't like it. There's there's too much going on in my mouth plus your mouth plus a hand. Yeah, two tongues, two tongues, and now ten fingers. Exactly. Like, I've got eight teeth in here as well. <laughs> All little baby milk teeth, <sighs> like little ring. veneer teeth. <laughs> um, yeah, hundred percent. Um, who? Which team would you want to be on? Um, okay, so I did do a little assessment. Okay, assessment. Uh, 
so Tempest, I thought you could do like a. I didn't really at this point know what they were going to be doing. Yeah, sure. <laughs> so I thought Tempest, you could really but overplay the, ahead of the, curve. the uh, really baggy skin suit. Yeah, gross. Um, I wouldn't want to do James because in case I had to recreate that forward roll, I would not like it. <laughs> Luki does not like to go upside down. And I thought Kimura would be funny with the tree stuff. So probably between Tempest and Kimura, but I would have wanted to work with James. <laughs> There's yeah. a lot going on there. Well, from first glance, can I be honest with you? I think Kimora probably isn't the most scintillating and exciting person to work with because she can't, she's not an acting girl and this mm. is an acting challenge. Um, Tempest du jour, I feel, would be quite annoying to work with, which I think that they proved right in this thing. Um, and so I would definitely go with James, mm. just personally. And also, James Mansfield is so fucking weird. Like, if you've spent even... 10 seconds on her YouTube As channel. As we have. Oh, I think that. Have you spent 10 seconds with them? <laughs> <laughs> She's Great friends. She's a fucking weirdo. Um, and yeah, that's the energy that I would want. I thought this was a great challenge. I love a reenactment. You do, don't uh, you? Me and Anita once did a fake charity video. Your best partner. Uh, yes, we've mentioned her a few times. So, hey, Neat, she's listening just now. For the new, but just also for the new our, uh, our other bingo girl. Yeah. I remember that one of our in a hotel. <laughs> on tour once we did like a sort of lots of black and white lots of gazing out of the windows gorgeous mm. because you are at first an actress yes second a slut yes um i when uh they were like looking at um georgia's and she was just literally just like it was, oh, what, so when the, it was at the like, work table it was like when the toys freeze on toy story i was absolutely <laughs> screaming and rue put the bear yeah. comes and has a little chin wag with les girlies um screaming at diabetica being in the same h&m shirt as, <laughs> like girls you need to be shopping a bit further than that's it's a h&m shirt it's it was, gays are us yeah it's honest. like bring your dad to work day mm -hmm. like oh hello this is a literally you in 30 40 years i don't know how old do we reckon diabetica and tempest are i'm gonna say 40 years I'm going to say 20 to 60. find out now, haven't I? 20 to 60. Well, no, 60 seems a bit... 50. Let's say 30 years time. I don't know. She really... the As as a queen in their lavender years and, and a queer elder, like jokes about age, oh, it's just not very funny, is it? Like, tell a funny joke Tempest about age. Tempest is 54. 54. I think that, though, because what most people remember her for is... She doesn't seem like she's over Little it, Missy <laughs> attacking her straight away. She Who was it again? Um, it was... Um, oh, my God. What the fuck's her name? She, and she gets brought back. Like, Naysha and Lopez. She does, no, it wasn't Naysha Lopez. She does the, um, like, boring vampire look. Oh, it's not Naysha Lopez. Is it... Um, Oh, I can see her face. Is Candy she, Ho. Candy Ho, yeah. yes. Yeah, and ain't she a fucking ho? Um, love the barefaced... Did I say she's 54, by the way? Yeah. Diabetica, I reckon, is around 25. Um, love te the audacity of Tempest being like, what the drag race audience know me for? Because 25. A, a bitch would scratch their head for a whisper of a memory. Like, <laughs> what do we remember you for? When it brought up when it brought up the pitch, when she re wore that crabs thing, I was like, oh, yeah, crabs. But that's like, we've literally, literally seen like, every season 50 times. I don't know how you could not remember her. But like, I, I mean, I just like, if you said to me, what does Tempest du jour remind you of? I'd be like, I mean, baggy bodysuit i'd say really but yeah. like apart from that like pff, it ain't a list is it um, but i do love to see these first out girls coming back in and milking that spotlight because tempest du jour literally hopped up and was like right it's about me just talking so much so loud but i think Wouldn't that you? was really helpful yeah because they're probably like oh well, like walking on eggshells like we don't know this bitch how much like yeah like, you want far them to we go. yeah with like take the piss of this take the piss of this yeah yeah, yeah. yeah like especially like do you think Georges has even seen that season? Probably not. <laughs> She's alive. <laughs> um, how dare James Manfield come on global TV and su and say that she is known for styling the worst wigs around? Does she have no respect for the Truffle Pigs dynasty? <laughs> the worst wigs. We're sending you a cease and desist. Um, Kimora, seven years later, still not getting any modicum of delivery or humour or personality. Love her. So gorgeous, though. So, and out of drag. Absolutely gorgeous. Mm. Absolutely gorgeous. I I know it's later on, but I'm just going to say one word. Green. <laughs> it was gorgeous. We'll you, get to it. green with envy. Um, what about when RuPaul came around and was like, um, Lady C, like, is there a cause that you care about? Like, make 
up a cause, bitch. Like, what a fucking waste of like. RuPaul is never going to talk to you ever again after it was like, um, yeah, um, I like, I don't really like, um, care about anything. It's like elderly black gays, yeah. uh, drag men like, in California. Say so you care <laughs> about the kids or the olds, like or the you know gays. I mean? Yeah, literally, just like something. Make up some shit. It was so weird. Um, I need to come out with a very, uh, very important something. Out of drag, is James Mansfield kind of gorgeous? I look. There was like a shot of him, and I was like. Do you look like a sort of old Hollywood star? Potentially. I think of him as a little, like a very young boy cherubish, like a very circular head. But also head. like cum pig. No, no, piglet. Piglet, okay. But um, is he Latinx? We don't know, do we? Because we, you did bring this up. He looks like, he's either a fan of like, he's either Latinx or he's Sienna X, which is a very famous tan, but I've just realised you wouldn't know that. Um... So can you tell me something? How could I be more ditzier and cutesier? Is it a um, lifestyle? You just need to change everything you do and yeah. flip reverse it. How adorable that she thinks that that is going to be the way to her win. Like, I just got to be more ditzier, more cutesier. Who? Georges. Sure. When he was like, what are you going to do? How are you going to win this challenge? Just be more ditzier. He's like, Mexican. He's Mex- he met- Mexicano. He referred to himself as Tejano on the show. I don't know what that means. Oh, very cute. Very weird that you would go for James Mansfield, who is like literally the quintessential blonde haired, blue eyed American. Um, but think of Rita Hayworth. She was Latino true. and she had to hide it. Yeah, we're all just um, a bit. No, hen- Tejanos is Spanish for Texan. Makes sense. T E J A N O S. Let's head into the Maxi Challenge shooting. Uh, and first up, I've just got to say, Daisha looked absolutely fucking mental. Like, men- like a mental person that had raided <laughs> a closet. Do we say mental? We probably don't. I don't know. I think about this quite a lot. You know, you're not meant to sort of... I don't of... believe you think about anything a lot. Well, you'd be surprised. <laughs> like, all the words for things being, like, surprising or very unusual are all the same words as people being mentally ill. Crazy. Like, mental, crazy. Mental. Loopy. Insane. Like, what are we meant to say? <laughs> mm. Wild. Well, our good friend Lulu Nunn. You wants... can't say nut. No, nuts. No, That's no. one. Um, but also... Justice for testicles. Like, w- words have different uses, you know? Sure. Can't just take nuts out. Mm. Um, uh, our good friend Lulu Nunn once said this. It's a, le- it's a learning lesson. Um, that actually, uh, she said a great one. That she was like, you should just instead of say, because I say insane and mental all the time. Mm. And she was like, oh, she said, you should just change it to, that's wild. Mm. Wild is a good one, which I try and do. Um, can, have you got a second to talk about in this shooting, Kerry Colby's and Robinson glam? I loved it. Uh, me too. I First of all, obsessed with the idea that she is just so, I mean, obviously relatable content, but just so beautiful that she just basically can't make herself look ugly. Every single step she makes to try and make herself look unattractive, she's like... But the clothing mm. wasn't ugly. She's wearing like this most luxe, like so much fabric, like coat yeah. thing and stuff like she yeah but she had on like glasses basically no makeup like an she's doing, she did the cosplay. courtney the courtney act i put on a pair of glasses and that makes me wacky <laughs> um love to see this entire group every single one of them crumbling one by one i was like um okay girls this <laughs> is probably not gonna turn out um were you obsessed with diabetica's 80s midwestern competitive dog breeder mum wig well yes so sorry are we what team is this i don't know you know it's just a melange of um Great, great podcast. <laughs> yeah, I mean, listen, they probably don't even watch Drag Race. They're probably just here for the dulcet times. Because I know of... that there was some great wigs in one of the group. It probably would have been I did like... Diabetica and the Anne Robinson and that group. No, because it was Bosco who had the amazing like skinhead girl devil horns. Oh, you loved that? Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah, it was very cute, actually. You know, I love me a horn. Um, I think that was Team Kimora. Yeah. Um, then let's talk about Maddie Morphosis. I don't know what group they're in, but I just wrote down... Who is going to stop Maddie Morphosis standing like the way that she does with her legs so wide apart, like she's slanging wide dick. Like every single time it cuts to her, it's just like her legs are like a whole like nine inches apart. It's because she's got a massive dong, but like, monster dong. But like put it in front of your legs and stand like a lady. Like, I know you ain't a faggot, but 
b- behave like one. <laughs> she seems to have zero showmanship. Sh- no showmanship, no style, no panache, no finesse. Where's your charisma, honey? Yeah, no, it's just so strange. Like, she was standing there in that fucking, like, literal, like, it's like an Evans suit. Like, just like, no... And then that hair was really no weird. No tailoring, well. no... And, and then just, like, standing there with her, like, legs apart. It was just like... What? I don't need female illusion, but, like, at least be a character. Like, at least if you're going to go with that, like, make the character, mm. like... Like incredibly masculine. I don't know. It was just. Ugh. Do you see how they they uh, did her dirty as well? Because Michelle was like, "No, <clears throat> say it again, but with like less monotone." And they used the proper monotone one in the thing. But maybe really? I should teach her a lesson. Good. Um, the Maddie talking heads as well are excruciating. It's like being stuck at po- a po- party with someone's really boring boyfriend. A punisher. Yeah, it's like, sweetie, go watch the rugby. The ladies are talking shop. <laughs> like, you know, like, you know exactly what I mean, though. When someone's like boring boyfriend comes over and talks to you and they're just like, so. Yeah, they're called a punisher. I, a punisher. <laughs> yeah. I really like, I really like that top. What is it? Sequins. It's mm. like. Move away from me. These are diamantes. Take this hetero energy elsewhere. The main thing I got from this shoot section was just that I love Willow. I love all of her outfits. I love all of her wigs. She makes me want to get back into pastels and get some like PC clippings. (laughs) I thought you were going to say she makes me want to be a better person. And I was just about to throw this cup of tea over you. She makes me want to reach for the stars. I can't be a better person. I cap at like 45. Yeah, I was going to say. You're really starting at ground zero. Um, Orion's use of armography felt very Shakespeare. Felt very sort of like, um, none of us know what we're doing and we've never acted before, but watch us go. Mm. It was very uncomfortable. Seeing you do that actually reminds me of a TikTok I saw. Yeah. <clears throat> it's like POV, me and my dreams do an interpretive dance to the alarm that's been going off for four minutes. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever had that? Because I, lit- I have had that. Me. Like the alarm going off is part of my dream and I'm like dancing to it. So my good lesbian friend Lottie is staying with me at the moment and we both have... Can you say, can you mention her without mentioning her sexuality? I can't. Fair enough. It's literally the only interesting thing about her. Um, it, I So our alarms will go off, we'll often uh, set them both for like half eight or whatever and our alarms will go off separately and they'll be like... F- 15 seconds break in between them and then we'll both put them on snooze so it'll just be like a literal like cacophony an orchestra of just alarms coming round every sort of like eight minutes just like for like the first half an hour of the morning and I just keep my phone like hugged to my chest and it is a mental way to wake up it sounds horrible yeah it's absolutely disgusting one of the best things about my Fitbit yeah. not Spawn um, is that you can it, I think it's clearly not <laughs> uh, you can set like silent alarms so my alarm just like it just like vibrates gently on oh, my cute. thing so it's not so loud you put it on the purse mm, I'm not that bendy full, full fist up I no. just keep a couple of huevos up there yeah um, let's talk about elimination day I guess love R- Bosco r- rocking those Kurt Cobain shades in her mop at all times. Oh, you love her. Love a decorative shade. Well, you've got to keep sh- the, uh, the illusion going, haven't yeah. you? For the love continuity. a decorative inside shade. You know me. Tell them about your um, your decorative workwear that you've that you really got into. Uh, well, it started from being based in the dungeon, as we were before. Yeah. So we had to basically raid... Just before COVID started, we did our, like, our own show, which was 80s immersive experience <laughs> yeah and um, basically when it's cold we just have to raid that tub for stuff so time to time you might see me and barney working in lovely velvet or silk suit jackets businessmen's yeah. jackets and they've also got some lovely 80s glasses in there sometimes a tiara if so that look helps. over and working girl is sat next to me Who, what's her, who's the actress in that shirking girl is it like um meg ryan or someone no Someone, someone from Working Girl, very famous actress, can't remember. Um, but yeah, she'll just be in a full sort of 80s sunglass. But also sometimes a lovely tiara. Sometimes you look over and it's actually Gypsy Rose Blanchard, mm. um, which is even more fun. Um, at this point, I thought we were seeing that Friar Tuck looking motherfucker a bit too much, weren't we? They were really cutting in to ask Orion about their boring opinions a lot. And I was like, hmm, why have they cut to them three times and... In They're not bit? really sex. Just like by elimination day, they mm. had like cut to them quite a few times and they weren't really saying anything of interest. And I was like, interesting. It's almost like editing is like, we need to focus on them for some reason. Um, so I thought, sayonara, honey. Sayonara? Yeah. Sayonara. Sayonara. 
Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> I've, got an accent. I've got an accent, honey. Um, crying. Tears rolling down my face at that video of Georgia's hitting those sassy boom cats in the kitchen. I would love Baby her family Georgie. story. Oh. Her and who was the other one who just have? Oh, Alyssa Hunter. Yeah. Love all these Latinas having families that are just so supportive and yeah. so queer. Love it. If all them fag, literally, I promise you, every single fagatini watching is like, she is I, I is we, me is them. Um, I used to make my mum watch my me freestyle to every extended version of a Britney single that ever came out. Just like I'd like sit her down in the lounge and be like, you need to watch this. And just like six minutes of me. Now watch me. Literally just like, imagine, imagine watching your like eight year old son who's parted his hair into curtains with, I uh, imagine some sort of coloured hair mascara, some secret weapon body glitter rolled all over his shiny torso, like dancing to Britney. Would you feel proud, yes or no? If that was these days, she'd probably get done for some kind of human sex trafficking <laughs> ring or something. I used to film them a lot as well. So definitely yeah, yeah, very yeah, more yeah, into yeah, the yeah, sex yeah. trafficking ring. Um, yeah, very, very, very cute. Loved to see her. And then as well... Like, Did you have six... your brothers doing like back in Vox? <laughs> <laughs> no, they were hiding in shame in the other room. Um, at like 16, she went and worked in the clubs. 16 and she looks absolutely fucking great i bet those other fucking hateful bitches oh were like God. trying to spike her trying to trip her over there's such a gap between is she from miami did i make that up she just screams miami I queen to me um she uh i bet i bet she's like florida like florida i imagine or miami um she absolutely that there's such a big gap in the world of drag between like the older queens and the younger queens nashville tennessee bitch. she's a tennessee bitch wow i really enjoy it i don't know since i always have my laptop here i don't know why we like wonder things so much and i could just check yeah you are host slash researcher um there's such a gap between older drag queens and younger drag queens because of like where age yeah (laughs) Just, just, you know, age-wise. Um, no, just because, like, younger queens, there's su- such a focus on um, social media and, like, online visibility and presence, which has never been um, a focus for, like, older queens. Where are the jokes? Exactly. Um, and so it's something that you see, especially in London, um, for anyone that's joining us outside of London, there is, like, a real gap between, like, the older performer queens and, like, the younger Instagram generation. And I just think, like, imagine what it is like to be like, okay, I've been pa- I've been paying my dues since I was 25 and I'm now 50 and I've been doing 25 years of performing. No Instagram, no nothing, just people turning up to my show because I'm sick. And then a 16-year-old, 40-pound young woman comes in and she's like, I'm not even old enough to be in this bar, but watch me jump into box splits from this box. Like, what the fuck would you do? Well, at least that's slightly different because that's not just like, oh, some social media bitch. Like she's there because of her of talent. talent. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. Or on the flip side, some 16 year old girl comes in and she's like, I have 100,000 followers and 15,000 15, people are coming to see me tonight. It's I guess like, you just got to like... Pack up your wig, Mary. You're, like, you're done. You paved the way. You are a <laughs> groundbreaker. You are a trailblazer. They do not know what they do not know. <laughs> But then these young bitches come in and they're like, why are you wearing a hard front? Why does it look like your makeup has been put on with a shovel? Like, How old are you? Literally. <laughs> so it's a difficult time. Oh. Um, the McDonald's. The game. Not the game. Nasty. The McDonald's to drag queen pipeline is a road less travelled, but an important one to talk about. Shout out LED. Shout out Barney. Uh Can you believe? You're, You're not on Drag Race. <laughs> uh, a bit like, uh, spiritually. Spiritually. Uh... <laughs> Wow. T- torn down on a Tuesday morning. Um, Willow's story broke my heart so much, but then those baby pictures really pieced it back together they for me. Really so did, cute. They? they have a sort of baby Yoda oh, Grogu. thing going on. Um, the, the Divas, I'm sorry, us being the Divas. We, okay. We need a Willow and Angie love. I need them to get together. I didn't. I didn't see it until this episode. But when she put, when Angie put her arm around Willow, I was like, oh, "You two, Wanji, Wanji, oh, Wingy, Wingy." Yeah, I was like, or "I need it." Ango, <laughs> Ango. Um, I would just. I absolutely need to see them get together. Imagine their sweet, passionate lovemaking. 
I no, actually, I, I see Angie more with Lady C. No, I think I don't Willow see is the immaculate near. conception. Okay, maybe they can be the sort of adopted child or something. Mm. But just, I love to see the honeys get together. Mm. And the only real uh, representation we've had of that is Brooke and Vanji, which I didn't want to see. Not Brangie. Brangie. Then wasn't there Cameron and Vanji as well? Oh yeah, on the Vegas show. Mm. But Sister Dick will make you sick. It will. So we've been told. Um, and also as well, like, who wants to be hooking up with someone that's like, oh, excuse me, while I just peel my dick from outside of my butt cheeks and please excuse all of the sores and cuts from taping. Yeah, but if you've both got that, then hours. it cancels it out. Yeah. Facts is facts. True. It's like uh, online dating for people with herpes. If we've all got it, that's all right. <laughs> And on that note, let's take a break, girlies. Every day, tens upon tens of wigs are left abandoned in our studio. Suffocating in bags, stacked up on top of each other in cramped, horrific conditions, just hoping and a-praying for the day that someone will order a custom truffle pig wig and they can finally be styled and rehomed to a loving owner. That's right. For just one nine nine per unit, you can make wig dreams come true. Help a wig today and rehome on www.trufflepigwigs.co.uk. Let me tell you something. Um, I saw a very important tweet uh, yesterday that said, that said, Nicole Scherzinger is who Tyra Banks would be if she was a pop star. And I don't think I need to explain that any further. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, welcome back, honeys. Uh, let's talk drags. Well, I didn't mean for that to happen. Fine. I, I think you did. Uh, I thought, Rue, this was classic, like seasons two through six classic RuPaul so shit so boring so plain (laughs) the audacity of how they talk to people on this main stage who bring uh, interesting creative boundary pushing costumes and then she just comes out in a in a lovely little bit of shimmer but I thought she looked nice Sure. Who the fuck is Ava Max? This is I wrote. Who is Ava Max? It's given industry plant. I've literally have never heard of this person before. (laughs) Um just very strange. Um and she was giving your classic. I'm very into drag right now. Yeah, she's giving me like a orange headed Charlie XCX. But the thing is about Charlie XCX is that Charlie XCX is like very. She's a child of the internet, and she is very like self aware. Like she knows that she's like basic. That's like a whole thing that she does. Like, sorry, excuse the uh, my stomach rumbling. There was a pay Um yeah, she, like, knows that she's basic and she, like, plays on it and it's funny, but just, like, this sort of just, like, random people coming in being like, oh, my God, I would totally wear that. Cool. But to be fair, just because you don't know who Ava Max is doesn't mean that she can't say the same things as Charlie XCX just because you know that she Are we not the target area. audience? Are we not people that live on the internet? I don't know, maybe she's not... big in America or something. I don't know. Sure, like sure, sure. Maybe the Yanks take But I don't her. like Charlie XCX, so. But I do. Just like you're wearing a do-rag. He's <laughs> okay. put his hoodie behind his ears and now it looks like he's got a lovely, lovely lady uh, turquoise do-rag. <laughs> lovely. Speaking of, have you, I don't think oh. you follow Bang London, but they've been previewing some looks they've been doing for Tase's something. Oh, but I have seen it. The one with the shoulders in the green. I've seen it on Tase. Well, there's like a um, Union Jack ensemble that has a big, wow. massive, long do rag that says like taste in diamonds on it and oh, stuff. Oh, god! And yeah, and something else. We're very into it. Love to see it. Should we talk runway theme? Spring has sprung. Oh, dreamy, Tell gorgeous, me what you would exciting. Do. Okay. I'm here. <laughs> it's conceptual, but just go with it, folks. Super cutesy, lots of pastel marabou, lots of that sheer ribbon. I don't know what it's called. Yeah. Um, so I imagine a massive wide hat that's got like a lovely ribbon underneath it that's probably yeah. got little, basically the theme is chicks, chicks <laughs> and baby bunnies. So yeah. probably loads of chicks and baby bunnies, maybe some Very animatronic yeah. sort of bouncing okay. around and like a massive basket again that's like full of ribbons, full of like all the little moving Very things. Very your Charlie and the Chocolate Fantasy. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then I, the dress I imagine to be like, have a real like wide 
Is she hooped? Thing. I saw the dress and the dress was hooped. But a high hoop. Kind of like Lady C- Lady C's S, but I would, would like a basic a mini skirt that really pops out. Yeah. And then like thigh high satin boots with all of like the satin covered buttons and just like all the pastels, yeah, all the marabou, moving chicks, a dream. Yeah, it really does sound like a dream view, doesn't it? Uh, this is something that I was incredibly uninspired by, if I'm honest. I would have to go down, annoyingly, my first thought, which if this is your first thought and someone else does it, yeah, basic. Drip, drip, drop little April showers. I mean, never, never that. But I would, my first thought is like Easter Bunny and do like proper like dominatrix Easter Bunny. Um, do like an, an evil Easter Bunny. But that's um, now been done by Manila. It's also so basic. Orion. That's why I said if it's your first thought, and can it? Bimini. Yeah, exactly. I mean, not like that evil, just like, um, not like an evil one. Maybe no, like but she's a bunny. Dominatrix bunny on the runway. Yeah. Um, Bunway. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we won't pay one the bunway. So then I thought I'd probably just do like a sort of ethereal Mother Earth, gorgeous, like covered in spring flowers, nude, apart from just like flowers, like up the up the neck, down, long down in the hair um, and across the breast and vagina. That's just made me think of another idea. Since it's all about birth and stuff, you could literally be like a pregnant belly that's like giving birth to like flowers and baby chicks and shit like coming out the front of you what is your obsession with baby chicks that's easter that's spring to baby chicks (laughs) Uh, but kind of into it um first up we have madame georges i went in and rated this higher when i saw it because i stopped it halfway through i'm surprised you didn't rate it higher the first time you saw it i thought it was a bit a bit clubby it could be like club wear it could be a little bit some of the queens are club queens, yeah, though. but very sweet and lovely and angelic. I thought it's simple, lots of movement. The hair, the, the glamour of it is giving sort of like old school, like Maria Feliz. Uh, like it's 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 everything. I loved it, um, and I just thought she looked so gorgeous. Yeah, but it's kind of like um, I didn't really give spring, but Kerry, like you, that can't be a thing that's commented on now. But it because... so often is for you. <laughs> Need I remind you of Crystal Versace? Yeah, um, it's. It, but I thought the hair was so was heaven, mm. and I thought that she it looked all well pieced together. I thought it kind of gave spring. I gave it a seven. I gave it a seven. Yeah, I liked it. Um, next up, we have Miss Kerry Colby in Creature Could Soar. Uh, so detective lukey over here have you seen yeah. that she's been posting these like gorgeous gorgeous orchid photos this week like, yeah. new delusion i think that was her original look and because of the whole we've seen you pretty now give us ugly she did some diy hack job to that i think outfit. she had an atelier diva moment she sure. has an atelier diva uh it's very moschino um but I've seen it done by other queens, notably Aquaria, and much better. And I think this looked a bit hokey made, which really hurts me to say. A bit, because but that's what I mean. I feel like she just was like, fuck, I've got this beautiful ugly. outfit, but I need to just like... Yeah, I need to look a bit crunchy. Yeah, so she did that. It was a bit reminiscent of me. I know you're not going to like this, but it was a bit reminiscent of me of looking at Shay's butterfly thing and thinking, I get where you're going with it, but the execution wasn't on. Sure, but I think this was much shoddier than Shay's thing. I don't think yeah. Shay's look. But just homage. that same feeling of being, like, oh, I love you. Yeah, it just didn't look know. like it was a fully realised look. Yeah, but seven. I gave it a six. Oh. Next up, we have Matt, Miss A P V M. Angie, 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 bitch. Drop it to the floor. Um, Cardi Bumblebee. <laughs> a vision, as always. However, badly made. Yeah, and obviously they spoke about the boob cups, but I also thought like the the faux body shape that the flowers were given wasn't right wasn't as well. Mm. And the waist as well. Like you are like literally the tiniest human being ever. Where is the waist? Mm. Ooh, a, I mean, Georges is still there and as is Willow. I gave it five. I gave it seven because I... Seven, it was fun. You like the beat. I can't give Angie or Kerry no, less see, than a seven. See, this is wrong. I don't care. It's my pod. I can do what I want. True. It's my pod. Uh, <laughs> it's my pod. It's my pod. My pod. Deja, seven pastel princess. Talk to me. I like the Easter bunniness of this uh, with the sort of Marie Antoinette-esque hair because you always associate that with pastels, which you always associate with spring. But the trousers were a little bit more for me. It was messy. It was messy, girl. I'll give it six. You just hate Deja. Kelly I... Andrews was right. Sorry to dead name, not dead name you, but government name you. Who? <laughs> Kelly Andrews. <laughs> oh, sorry. She messages uh, us oh. every week being like, wow, you're really being nasty about Deja again, aren't you, Barney? Do you know what the thing is? Is It's just, it's it, there's always one every season where it's just like the taste level 
and like the style and it's if the style is just so far removed from what you would choose how people see themselves in drag being like oh i want to be a drag queen that is like it's often the girls that are like i want to be like pretty like like what she gives is just like the opposite of what i'd want to look like Mm. and it's pretty much every time so i'm just never really into it like i just thought this was and also and i know this is unfair but don't walk into the singing challenge and tell everyone that you're a recording artist don't walk into Drag Race and say that you make costumes for other people and then your costumes aren't good. Mm. It just sets an unfair... It's, I'm calling it unfair, but it's an unrealistic standard. Sorry, honey. Next up... How we, many did you give it? I gave it six. I gave it six also. Oh. You did pretty high for... It was fine. Just, it was fine. I just thought it was messy. Sure. It wasn't like awful. It wasn't a bad concept. Next up, we have Maddie M serving April Showers Depression Demon. Um, I thought this was her best look by far, so far. I really liked how the cloud was done. I thought that looked really good. Uh, I'm not sure she's cleared the rain trademark with April Carrion. Um, but I really think your full body is covered in tassels and you can't even like walk with like a, a switch in your hip. Like you're like if you're wearing tassels, you must shimmy. That that them's the rules. And it this like you don't even have to. Like you literally can just like do the smallest movement and it just like looks so sick. So why are you just walking around? Because the lady doth got no style, honey. Mm. Um, first of all, we would be remiss to say how overdone this look is. The Viv literally did the exact same thing in oh, the shit, same yeah. colours. Um, and also just the general sort of like rain, like April Carrion obviously has done like a similar sort of like rain thing. It's an overworked thing. And I'm starting, I noticed um, that I said for the past two weeks in a row that it looks like something that someone else has done and she's just redone. And I know that RuPaul was like, you don't need to recreate the wheel, just make it interesting. I don't think it's interesting either. Mm. And I thought when I saw this, I was like, "Mm, fine, like good for her. But it's like these ideas are just like, there's nothing unique or interesting about them. No. And they're always just like, there's the idea, then nothing else. But yes, I will say, I really thought the cloud was fantastic. Most importantly, we would be remiss not to mention Chantel DeMarco, who is very famously, um, her Miss Continental performance was um, literally this. It's like not inspired by it, it's this exact costume. And it's from the early 2000s. And it's in the same colours, the same cloud, the same lights, everything. This is from like the 20s or something. Someone's made this in the 20s. Yeah, 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 sure. But like, it's a very famous performance. Um, We'll put up a photo on the pod. No, we won't. We won't put up a We will, because I've actually already saved it. Fine. Um, We'll see. It's it's a very famous performance. And when you look at it, you're like, ah, the exact same costume. So, I mean, sure. Uh, what did you give it? I gave it a six. I gave it a seven. Okay, cool. You, you, you like the beat. Don't I, be afraid. As I said before, I thought the cloud was very, very, very well made. Miss Jasmine. You will not let me finish that sentence. You literally jump on the end of it every time. Sorry. I thought the cloud was very well made. Gorgeous. Thank you. Miss Jasmine Kennedy serving Abby Lee Dance Company. Serving red and green, Miss Christmas, not spring, honey. Serving Robbie Turnter in the face. Mm. I can't get over it every single time. I'm like, she's lucky she's got nice teeth. Because otherwise, <laughs> oh my the doppelganger. Gosh. Oh my god! Is it me? It's mean to put a picture of Robbie Turner's teeth. Mouthful of tools. Oof. Oh god! Do you remember that? You know that one photo that I'm talking of the close mm. up. Yeah. Um. Very Kate Bush in the presentation as well. There's a lot going on. Do you think? Very community community uh, college. I thought the work she had done on the corset was very nice, or the, okay. the stone in. But yeah, like red and green ain't spring. Dare this not thing. to be seen in spring. Mm. Yeah, I gave it a five. I gave it a six. I think that's for the yeah. for the stoning work. Okay. Uh, and then we have Orion Story serving Yeaster Bunny. <laughs> I think Orion is my deja. Really? That yeah. It's just not hitting at all. Like, really not. Orion really reminds me of one of my old managers um, uh, when I used to work at Dr. Martins. Shout out, Dr. Martins. Uh, had. To- well, not really shout out because I had to leave because reported, look, reported racism and they uh, ignored it. So And also, like, why are we shouting out anyone? They can shout out us and give us some yeah, free true. shit. Yeah, true. I, well, I, I mean, I got enough free <laughs> shit from him. Uh, that makes it sound like I was constantly thieving, which I wasn't. He was being racist and stealing all the shoes. <laughs> uh, no, although shout out to the one time um, that, do you remember I told you that when I was in the toilet once, um, I obviously, if you go to work, you steal toilet roll, right? I was like 22 at the time. I was, uh, bitches be stealing toilet roll from me. I stole literally everything yeah, 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 from I mean, my last job. Yeah, you are. You should be locked up. And I was in charge of ordering stuff. So I just or, <laughs> order extra stuff. Like, Clothes. For oh, you. I need some more cleaning products. So I'll just buy double and take them home. Um, But yeah, I literally stole toilet roll one time and forgot. Like, this was very early on in my uh, work career. 
Uh, I say work career. I think I worked there for like three months. Um, and I stole toilet roll. And then when you do the, it was like my first time ever doing the closing shift. And when you do the closing shift, for some reason, the manager checks your bags. And I opened, he, I opened a bag. I had like a Selfridges bag with me. And I opened the bag and there was like six rolls of toilet roll. And then the next day. I brought that from home. He, the next day he called me into the office and he was like, Barney, I'm just going to ask you one question. Did you steal toilet roll yesterday? And I was like, uh, so ready to be like, are you fucking kidding me? I'm, I was going to a fancy dress party as a mummy. Uh. And then I was just like, uh, yes, I did. I was like, yeah, I did. And he was like, okay, um, I'm going to have to write, me, <laughs> I'm going to have to write you up for that. I was like, Right, really? what? Like, get a fucking hobby. Like, anyway, he reminds me of one of the managers from Doc Martens. Uh, that was a real tangent that no one found interesting. But most importantly, let's talk about Orion's story. Can we talk about that Gia Gun eyelash? Oh, I didn't notice that. Oh my God. It was like she'd glued What's half with of... that eyelash, girl? <laughs> so she glued one of it, like half of it in the right place and then just been, and then blinked and it just like stuck to her eyelid or something. It was like so mental. Um, she said, Wild. But in her own words, it's flirty and absolutely sexy. Flirty and absolutely sexy. You're fucking... It's coming on leaps and bounds. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I thought great body. The physique, physically fit was physically fit. Um, I thought the ears were weird, a bit floppy, but not in like a cute, luxe, floppy way. Not in a hot way. No. Um, I just thought it was a bit minimal compared to everyone else. Like she could have had like a massive, like bejeweled carrot handbag or just like something. Can I say something? No. I hate lingerie on drag queens. Because they always have tights and have like weird, like puss area and like the thong over the tights at the back is always gross. Couple of reasons. Couple of reasons. For the girls that want to just be sexy girls, often a go to, very boring, very not interesting. There's a lot of cheap underwear out there. You're boring. Uh, but, also as well, like, exactly like you said, like, when you're working with padding and tights and um, body and, like, whatever you've, whatever jiggery pokery you've got going on under there, it takes a lot of finesse to make it look like a nice body. And mm. often that finesse is not there. And I just thought on hers, like you said, like, the with the padding and shit, it's like, if I really think if you're going to go, you should try and go bare-legged. Yeah. Like, try and go unpadded. I mean, I don't mind see like, you know me, I don't, I don't mind seeing no padding at all. He don't mind, ladies in paint. <laughs> sure. <laughs> sure. Um, but yeah, it's just like, I just think often when girls come down in underwear, obviously you've got exceptions to the rules. Let's talk about boudoir. Let's talk about Valentina coming down in that gorgeous But also set. she she had a weird groinal area. Yeah, she did. But um, I, I don't know. It's just not for me. And as soon as I see someone come down in underwear, I think it's a bit of a cop out. Yeah. Because if realistically, if you're going to be given underwear, I would like you to be given vintage set or like Fredericks of Hollywood trashy lingerie. I just think it's unfair that your whole look for this would fit inside a shoe and, and yeah. other people's have like, they've wasted whole suitcases on this. Talk to fucking, uh, what's, no, uh, Courtney can do sexy. She brought wings with her. Yeah. On a plane. She actually probably flew in herself on them yeah, to save. Probably, probably. I gave it five and a half. Uh, I gave it five. Uh, let's next talk about Will Old Pill. Will Old Pill. Little House on the Fairy Cottage Core. Amazing. When she opened that door and I saw that stupid little face, I screamed. Angel face. So adorable. So cute. I just always look forward to her on the runners. I gave it a nine. I gave it a nine. Interesting, conceptual. She's just... And then the little joke at the end, just yeah, extra always, cherry on top. Always a little nihilistic reminder that not only does she hate you, she hates herself. And her body that is a cage of pain and emotion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very relatable content. I just love her so much. Next up, we have Diabetica serving Pixie. I love the makeup and the concept. Yeah. I didn't love the ruching. Um, the ruching on the satin just reads very early 2000s gross. Yeah, very Natalie Cassidy uh, in them trousers. Yeah. I can so clearly see that picture of Natalie Cassidy in the sex necklace and the pink satin ruched Um do we dare sort of. to say we'll put it up? Let's put it... No, but we don't because I swear one time I tried to find it and I couldn't find it. So you fabricated this? So, no, but like, fantasy. you know what I'm talking about, right? I know the sex next looks. Yeah, and she's in like pink satin roots. They've got like a cord up the side, like such... And, and then like... Are they like knee a high three-quarter length? Oh. Yeah, 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 and like knee-high pointy boots. But I just couldn't find the actual photo and I know it 100% because it was like... I, it was just, yeah, iconic. Iconic piece of costuming. Um... But yeah, sure. Interesting. I gave it six. I gave it seven. Next up, we have 
Lady Camden serving uh, what's the tea? <laughs> <laughs> question mark. Victoria Scone found quaking. <laughs> I liked the dress as a tablecloth concept. I really like the shape of the like bust of the dress. Yeah. I just thought that the teapot looked a bit hokey, as did mm. the tea when it came out. And yeah. yeah, it's unfortunate that we've just seen Victoria smash this vibe in I'm... a more interesting way. Yeah. And what I loved about Vicky's as well is that like she has... She, it was like a starter. You know how we always say like, find a costume, find a concept, and then you build from there. Mm. It's like her build was, it was so layered because it was like, um, Lee Bowery has done that really famous um, roadshow. What's that roadshow program called? Not Antiques Roadshow. Oh, is Lee Bowery still on? The free thing, free exhibition. Oh no, but we need to go to that. We'll talk after. Um, the, he did a really famous thing where he went for high tea. Mm. And so it's like, it's got the links that she'd done the tea. It was also a Lee Bowery style silhouette. Um, she also had that. Did she have a face kini? No, she had face. <laughs> they so often do, honey. Um, and it was just like she built from there and it would just look, look fantastic. And then also the fact that she's Victoria's con. Like it just all made sense. Mm. Whereas like this just felt a bit unimaginative. And the print and on the table cloth. Yeah, it wasn't punchy. Oh, particularly no. springy. I don't think of tea as spring either. No, six. I gave it. I gave it six also. Next up, we have Bosco. Just making it through the rain, honey. You got to. Um, it was a cute idea, but neither of the looks were very nice. I oh, really, I thought they were both quite interesting. I thought they were like... The yellow dress I thought was whack. Like that's like a bridesmaid dress from like the high wow. street to me. It's so... I just really want to love Bosco, but she's... I do. I, do. Um, I wish the poodle had more oomph. I gave her seven truffles, though. I gave her eight. I, I liked it. I know what you mean about the poodle. I wish that it had... If she if it was going to be short and out, I wish it was more severely short and out. It just seemed a bit limp dick. It just seems like our, our, our first ones before we really knew what we wanted to do with them. Yeah, but don't hot that up because someone's got them. I, in fact, quite often the people that have the early poodles wear them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I just... I thought it was interesting. Um, next up, we have... Oh, we're going to critique... I was pretty fast. Out. I was pretty loose with these because they're not well, competing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> first up, we have Tempest Du Jour serving. This isn't the last you've seen of Tempest Du Jour. I hope it is. Uh, this is not spring, but it's classic TDJ. And I thought, let's give the gal an eight. <laughs> <laughs> it's the best I've ever seen her look, to be honest, because all I've ever seen from her is absolute garbage. Uh, the, um, the headwear was questionable as it's cultural appropriationness. Why? Qatar Airways? Yes. Okay. I'm um, not sure if she is of Arabic Descent. slash Middle Eastern. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but isn't that sort of like a more vintage like Sunset Boulevard look? But is that where the reference is from in like Sunset Boulevard? Yeah, I, would, I haven't seen Sunset Boulevard, but yeah, like in the like, 60s, people sort of did that a lot, didn't they? But I think that's taking from like, oh, the new world. Really? Oh, I've never really put two and two together. I gave her a seven. Like, te- thought- like when they all wore turbans in the 70s. Sure, 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 sure. <laughs> I thought, why not, you crazy bitch? James serving future goddess. Oh, such an icon, such a vision, such a great reference. What a way to go. 10. Heaven. You give it a 10? Yeah. I give, I give it a nine, but I'll give it a 10. <laughs> why the fuck not? Exactly, why not? Next up, we have Kamora, <gasps> Chicago's OG Mackie <laughs> That's like sort of just like, just getting the last drops out. Oh, <laughs> stunning. I just wrote heaven. That, or what a classy and rich colour. <laughs> <laughs> Sensational. So glad as well that seeing, I guess, similar story. Like when you see the runway of that outfit is on a white woman wearing the head, head scarfs a bit. Yeah. But seeing it, it's just like, oh, it all came together. That See what is that colour? It it's like to. fantastic. Kind of like a roasted pistachio, it's like, like sagey. Mm, like but warm, I feel like sage rich. is more like cool. I don't know. Yeah, like oh heaven. And I thought Kamora, or the photo that's being shown the, of the the Mugler runway, like uh, the Mackie runway. Sorry, um, it is. She looks a million times better than the model. So much better. Yeah, she's like, I mean, shout out to being sample size, I guess. Mm. Like, she looks absolutely incredible. Yeah, I just screamed, and she, I really felt like she stole the whole runway. And that's obviously a 10. Yeah, obviously a 10. Let's talk Zinger and Minger. My Zinger, it's got to be Georgie's updo. I loved it. Georgie? 
gorgeous sure um i just absolutely loved it so much like just like the way it was like snatched at the sides but then it had some height but then it had the fringe where it was like vintage but also looked sort of latin as well it reminded it. me of a nicer version of how i used to do my hair sometimes when i had my um <laughs> okay. page fringe yeah no she was the original uh fringe queen my zinger would be on the runway james mansfield giant blonde updo with all the stupid yes. bows and off the runway, Bosco's little devil skinhead look. Yeah, I loved that. Loved that. Let's talk Minga, though. You got to. Where, even though it cannot always be day. It's Bosco's sad little poodle. Really? It was nearly going to be Orion's one. But when I saw it again, I was like, oh, it's actually not as flat as I thought it was. It's actually quite sexy. Okay. Uh, my Minga has to be Jasmine Kennedy's Miss Arkansas pile-up. Mm. I don't know what was going on in the season three pageant. It was actually very Alyssa as well. Like I don't even understand how those things work because they seem to sit so they seem to fit like be so behind the crown. I think you tease backwards. I don't. I don't know. Isn't it's it like, not just like a thing plonked on with loads of like the black spray? I don't know. Hair? I don't know what the girlies are doing. So what do you think that was her real hairline? I don't know. Probably not because I imagine she has quite a square hairline. That's where the black spray comes in. Talk mm. to Ginger Man. <laughs> um, let's talk critiques. Save a queen PSA. Who knew that regular degular dry white woman fish is only a lack of eyelashes away? <laughs> <laughs> I was crying when she said that. Uh, very. Uh... Have you gone straight on to the critiques of all the things? Yeah. Have you not got anything to say about the performance, about the actual thing? I mean, we can if you want, but not really. Go on, you tell them. You lead. Uh, well, first of all, first thought was it feels a bit amateur beat poetry at times yeah 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> um my thoughts on team tempest i wish georgia's had picked less to say she looks great but it was just so fucking stiff just pointless I mean, what's new uh kerry was very good i really got glam but scatty art mum diva from her <laughs> uh angie as we saw in the filming has the best line of the the group about the soggy fruit yeah um i thought dyer was great face yeah and again i thought dyer was good i feel like she's really the only person that seems to get the tone of the comedy challenges like she got it with the the teasers no dyer no deja sorry uh deja sky yeah she's just the only one who like actually gets how you like what like this is a charity appeal this is how you act in a charity appeal yeah definitely i thought it was fun and i liked it whoa phantom sounds uh, James's team, just like where are the rhythm? Like they're literally if you're like a sucker for the rhythm. I it's am. Rhythm, Thank say. God for Willow in this team pulling it together. Although I thought Maddie's 312 month old baby line was a good one. Mm. Uh, James herself was amazing. I thought actually all the returning queens were quite good in them. Yeah. Um, I had to search what a buffalo nickel was. Do you know what it I is? I don't, but I'm sure you're going to tell me. It's five cents. Wow, real yeah. anticlimactic there. <laughs> uh, Kamora's team had the only line that made me do a, how you say, a laugh out loud in the whole La thing, Mafayo. which was Lady C talking about the elephantitis of the earlobes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I thought this team was a lot stronger, like in the pleads to camera rather than their like verses, but like they saved it in the end yeah. and my final comment is why do american women love sarah mclaughlin so much i don't know who she is like is she in the arms of the angel i don't even know what that is like this like the song that people use to make other people sad i feel like they always the sort 2000s. of like talk about her in reference to like basic white women on like well, yeah. tv show she's the sort of uh she's just become a sort of cultural reference she's a she's a tammy faye baker you know um but it's just very boring but do we uh, uh, do we even know who she she's is she's an angel she's a singer i know who she, she is oh. but i'd like what are her songs angel. 40 million albums sold worldwide angel can you check if it's angel because i think it is or in the arms of uh, angel is her number three biggest hit yeah, I mean, she's just boring. Along I, with Adia, Into she, the Fire, Building a Mystery, and like I Will a, Remember She's like you. a Dido, you know? Gross. Shout out to the funniest video ever of Amy Winehouse when they're like, <laughs> so uh, what do you think of Dido? Like, oh. Are they uh, like funeral songs, it seems like? Yeah, I guess so. Can we ban straight women saying, I would wear this? And I've said it before, but I'll say it again. Wow. How do you know what Ava Max's uh, sexual preference is? Too basic to be queer. 
Well, you say that. Look at you. We looked in the mirror recently. You, you say that, but drag inspires everything. You know what I mean? Like to be like, oh my god, I would wear that. It's like, yeah, obviously. Like if you think that there are no drag, like first of all, like literally all of the people that design costumes for Drag Race, like design costumes for Ariana's tour and for like all of the divas. Anyway, it's like yeah, but it's like out of all the things on the runway. I would wear that because the rest are ugly. Yeah, sure, 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 sure. So the safe queens before the delibs are Kerry, Deja, Maddie, Willow and Dyer. So they get to hop, skip and a jump to Untucked. And how interesting that we're now in a place where the gays can make OJ references in panels. <laughs> Seems strange, doesn't it? There's a couple of, couple of the killers. That people really like to reference. I'm looking at you, Jeffrey Dahmer. If you are sorry, if you're not aware of what we're talking about, in the OJ case, there was like a glove involved in there. One of the lawyers was like, if the glove don't fit, you must acquit. Yeah. So Ross was was saying, like, honey, if that dress don't fit, acquit. Which is one of the most (laughs) fascinating things about the OJ case that um, in a court of law, they were like, oh, whoever um, murdered uh, Nicole Brown, they were like, was wearing these gloves. And then in front of, the court they were like look oj put on the gloves they don't even fit and he was just like they clearly did fit and it was done so well and you know the the people versus oj the um who's the the gay guy that does a, ryan murphy yeah 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 that one with um ross geller in. i sort of tapped out when i saw how much the kardashian children were featured in it i was like yeah. this doesn't seem like it's about a trial <laughs> well i mean robert kardashian senior was the lawyer yeah but like why do we need to know why about his Christiana? children yeah why like, is christian um but um yeah they in in it, it was like so funny it was like the gloves like so clearly and you can see the clip on youtube i'm sure like they so clearly fit and he's like look the gloves do not fit and that was like was one of like the main central things that yeah it like the it case, like, like, he couldn't on. have done it because the gloves don't fit him so he couldn't have strangled her it's like okay oh yeah i mean he did strangle her and whatever <laughs> Rest in peace, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, very weird that they bring up that. Um, I thought it was interesting because um, they praised Bosco for showing a tougher side and then a softer, more feminine one. But that's exactly what Alyssa Hunter was trying to give them episode one, but they just weren't having it. It's too soon, Alyssa, too soon. Would you say the tougher side was how strong her jaw was? No, it was that rocker, the rock, rocker chick. The rock. Should we talk about the lip sync? Mm. My head and my heart. Well, okay, let's quickly say that Bosco is the winner. Yeah. So that's good for her. She was wanting it. Lady C, Andy and Jasmine. <laughs> she was wanting it. <laughs> I mean, they, they put her saying that she wanted it at the top of the show. Who knows what episode that actually came yeah, from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but Orion and Georgia are in the bottom and TBH, I'd have to agree. With Georgie. Georgie and Orion, yeah. Because at least Maddie had that one funny line. Yeah. Okay, I agree. I agree. My Head and My Heart by Ava Max. Have you ever heard it? Uh, no, but then I, as soon as it started, it's just basically la 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 la. It goes around the world like na 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 na. Which is a banger. It is a banger. And we uh, have never done that weird, creepy left to right TikTok to no, it. No, we haven't. Maybe we should. As soon as I saw the intensity in Georges' eyes and those fluffy little ears fell off, I thought, bye bye, Orion. It's been cute. <sighs> Not your wig coming loose after chorus one, Orion. How is your wig slipping back and showing your receding hairline before the middle eight has kicked in? Yeah. That's crazy. what I need to know. Just, oh, I've just written. Gorgeous. Georges is a dream. So little and compact. Poor Orion. I feel like this is a masterclass in what? Physical dexterity. Thank you. Not Talk to me about how my glam diva is maintaining a six part hair system in pristine order. Count them. And your wig is on the back of your neck. Like what? No, couldn't be me. This was this. Yeah, this was like a masterclass in like how to and how to not do a lip sync. Yeah. And let tell me something that you cannot do is do a what is this called a spectacles testicles what I'm watch what is that called what like a father son holy yeah. Christ to cross yourself sure you can't do that and then throw yourself onto the floor it was like when drunk rednecks like throw themselves into the puddles of mud did you see her she went she did a crucifix who Orion yeah did a crucifix and then threw herself forward flat onto the floor it was like what like on your belly. Yeah. How did you not see it? Like, instead I of doing, was... like, a death drop, she just went cross and then went through herself forward onto her stomach. I watched it, it like, twice and oh both times God. I just couldn't not just only look at things. And like every now and then, Orion, when they cut to her or just, like, in the background, I could see her flailing around doing something. What about kicking off your shoes feels so fucking good? I need to know. <sighs> I as, mean, obviously, as... the pain in the balls of your feet from standing up for 20 hours, but... 
Just like, I'm not, you can hold it for another three minutes. Come on, girly. And a lady that doth do drag knows how motherfucking slippy it is to be in on a stage in tights. Like, that's why I would never take my, obviously I would Maybe never take my shoes Maybe they had the dance tights with the little... The dance skin. The little hole at the bottom. Um, it was, it, it was a shit show from beginning to end for her. I'm really sorry, Orion. It just, you know that when it's, it's the desperation of taking your shoes off that it's like... Mm. And like, if you're going to take them off, sorry to interrupt, like, then fucking show us something you yeah. couldn't do in heels. But when you've seen Kylie Cynic Love do backflips into box splits in heels, and when you've seen, like, the the divas, I'm looking at you, Kahana Montrese, literally doing back tucks. What's in, a back tuck? Like, it's like a backflip, but you tuck instead. So, like, uh, so... So instead of landing on your feet, you land in, like, a little mushroom float. It's basically the back, um, it's the back flip equivalent of an Arab spring. Like a no-hander? No, never mind. It's hard to describe <laughs> without getting up and doing it, which I'm doing on a Tuesday morning. I don't believe you can. A back tuck? Yeah. I mean, you might be right at this point. <laughs> I, you might be right. Um, and obviously, very clear to say, Georgia's won. Yeah, honestly, what what in the world would be happening if that didn't truly truly and i'm glad because i can't see georgie go yet uh let's talk rose and thorn my rose was willow's little face poking out of the door yeah yeah absolutely mine was i know this is so basic and so but like bosco finally winning something because i feel like my mania for bosco has finally been validated mm-hmm. that i'm like i love her so much like is she not gonna do well i need to do those fucking eyebrows yeah, yeah. i literally haven't been in makeup since drag race started that means that Love. Four weeks, yeah, get into it. Love. Get into it. We've skin. been so fucking busy with wigs that uh, is for any of our followers that have seen, we basically haven't posted anything on our Instagram. And so our Instagram has gone mute for like a month just because we've been so busy that it's like at this point, it's like we actually can't afford to take any fo- to stop and take yeah. any photos. Uh so that's cool and fun. Um my thorn is I cannot watch another motherfucking girl kick off her pumps. Don't you have any outside training? You are in mixed company. Mm. Keep them heels on your feet. Mine was cornbread leaving. I mean, you probably forgot all about that, didn't you? Of course. Yeah, I mean, outside of munch, you know. <laughs> I'm done with it. Next week, yeah. it's the unconventional sewing challenge. Which is my own personal hell. Same. Uh, should I quickly run you through what happened in Untucked? Uh, yeah, I'd love you to. So cornbread uh, was basically in there talking about how she's in so much pain and showing her chocolate did not have golden tickets that was like the first and half. as you famously told us it's made out of plastic it, is it made ain't out of plastic. even chocolate you don't even get the sen- the satisfaction of being like well i'll fucking eat this chocolate to make myself feel better yeah exactly so please give over your plastic chocolate nasty uh, and she gave her my ankle my ankle my uh, ankle vanjie style exit that now reminds me of our gay friend andrew Gar- garfield you know on, when he was on that sort of uh would you hate Andrew Garfield. Yeah. Spider-Man. You're into them spidey senses, aren't you? His one is, I don't like Tobey Maguire and I don't like him. I only so like... So you don't like two thirds of the... Yeah. <laughs> well, it's a lot of lot of legacy to dislike. I um, mean, you're the one who's telling me what I do and don't like. Tom Holland. But you're into Tom Holland. Yeah, I like Tom Holland. Yeah, cute. Um, oh, I thought you didn't mind uh, Andrew Garfield for some reason. That, uh, well, I don't, that Spider-Man is okay. Yeah. But I don't really like him as a person. He's a bit cringy. He's, he's white. And a male. Same with um, you. I don't like you yeah. either. Um, he, I, do you remember when he came to Sink the Pink and did some, uh, <laughs> no, I do not. He came Handography. To, yeah. He came to Sink the Pink and did some, uh, white girl voguing mm. on the stage, which was very cute for the girls. Um, it seemed like Dyer was very pressed when the girls came back in from critiques because previously she had been saying, well, she had been thinking that the, her other teammates were in the bottom and that she was the star of her show. And then she, they come in and were like, oh, no, we're, us two are definitely in the top. And her face was so cracked. She was literally like, oh, God, the poor girlies. Like, really should have really? been me. I, I really do feel like I should have been on the stage. And yeah, so that was quite funny. And then the girls discussed cornbread. Willow said her leaving is the lowest moment she's had here. And uh, Kerry said the cornbread felt like home to her. That Very nice. honestly enough to break my heart. I would love right now nothing more than to be in a four-way embrace with Cornbread, Kerry and Willow. Oh, Willow so nice. sort of like in the middle of us at navel length. 
Well, her feet wouldn't touch the floor. Height. We'd be Not length, <laughs> navel length, length sure. on the brain. The navel boys <laughs> do have the length. Um, also, in the break, we decided that we actually weren't going to run through UK versus the world. Let us tell you a little secret about UK versus the world. It's dog shit. <laughs> uh, mainly because our sweet angel and front runner Lemon was eliminated in the first yeah, week. I and just. Uh, here we are talking about it funny that isn't it yeah it, well i mean we can talk about it in broad uh, we were gonna like really go into it in the way that we did with dragula but we were dragula had us in a vice like death grip of satisfaction power and hunger whereas at uk versus the world i was on my phone most of the time it's like there's not really the only person that i really cared about was lemon and now you done got rid of her mm. after let me just say they let Jujubee, fourth time appearance Jujubee, stand up in a shit mall dress and sing a boring song. So out- many original numbers. So bad. And they didn't critique her and be like, we have literally seen this exact same thing. Not only just from every single shit drag queen across the nation, but also we've seen it specifically from you. Mm. And then lemon came rocked the fucking casbah and then she did not rock anything it was a very lackluster performance oh yeah no she was great no no she was good like compared to the others she was good i mean just because the literally the whole talent show was so fucking bad but wait we must tell you something first there's basically all star rules so the top two queens lip sync and the winner eliminates one of the bottom queens and let me tell you the group chat was on fuego about this lip sync. Basically, Lemon got the chop because she jumped off of a box and they were like, but is it original though? Because we've seen it with um, Aja. And any queen with an eye for detail would say, well, funnily enough, Aja jumped off a box that was A, shorter, but also into, she she jumped into a dip and Lemon jumped into a split. They're like two different things. They just both jumped. And you're telling me that no queen jumps off a speaker. Come on. Well, that's what they said. And you'll be interested to know, or it's kind of worth looking at what Barney heralded the worst lip sync of all time with Jimbo and Pangina, where Jimbo has zero spatial awareness and and basically bangs into and collides into Pangina four times. At one point, she has to like pick Jimbo up. And at one time, she falls onto the floor. It's fucking mental. And you're seeing her. All she does is skip. Mm hmm. The ladies don't love a skip. Like what like <laughs> is is absolute. Fun. I just couldn't believe that I was like, this is supposed to be like, this UK versus the world is almost like a bit of like an all stars. Yeah. Like, and it's like, just so like, what? This is the first week of the winners. Like what the fuck? Like, I don't know. It ain't for me, girl. Um, I don't, I'm kind of, because I haven't seen the Dutch one or the Thailand one. I'm interested to see more of... Um... Janie, Janie, Jack A yeah. from Holland and um, yeah, Pangina Heels, who's actually one of the hosts of Thailand's. So I'll carry on watching it, but I mean, put it on in the background if you're doing washing up, but I wouldn't run home for it, girlies. Yeah, it ain't it. And um, as for the UK girls. Barney's looking at me. I don't know what he wants from me. I I just hope they do UK versus the world with some season two girls. That'd be lovely. I'd love to imagine TT coming back. Yeah, it's only season one girls are using, which makes me think: Did they shoot this ages ago? Yeah, I guess so. But I'd like to see it with Hora. I'd like to see it with Tia. I'd like to see it with uh, who else? I'd like to see it with uh, Ginny Lemon. I'd like to see. I'd like to see the girls back, basically. Mm. Um, and maybe even some season. Oh, bring back River Medway. <laughs> uh, I'd like to see some season three girls. So, um, but yeah. Uh, let you drop us drop us a couple of inbox messages and tell us what you thought um about that shit show let us know <laughs> anyway i guess it's time we're on the way out See yes that- thank you please like and subscribe and share and tell your friends and buy wigs bye, bye.